Begin the card down the second you saw him down Samachay. Okay. Begin on the second line down at the top of the Yambu. The Gemara continues explaining the halacha of our previous Mishnah regarding the procession that was done when they brought the car from Pesach every single year. Our Shia's correspond to the test the Tesla anytime. I appreciate everyone joining us for today's daf. Something we're going to discuss in today's daf was first we're going to finish off the parak by discussing some of the parameters of the halacha of our Mishnah regarding how the last group came and also regarding that. The, the, they did the Shalom B'tzei Chachamim when they used to wash out the, 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 the Azaro on Arab Pesach when it was when it fell out on Shabbos and then the Gemara concludes regarding the Halacha of Halacha as it applied in the Beis Amikdash on Arab Pesach. Then we continue with the next parak, which we start off regarding which parts of the Karpen Pesach can be done, which cannot be done, which is subject to Machlikis when it falls out on Shabbos regarding doing the Avoid of the Beis Amikdash. Then some key terms of council we're going to discuss of ain't shvuz the mikdash that there's no rabbinic prohibitions in the base of mikdash. Kan zuzmen is the concept that kan they are very careful, they're very meticulous, and therefore we don't have to be concerned with certain things with them. And also damatamsis is that of the leftover blood which are not valid for the avodah and for the zrikas adam. And we discuss regarding as it applies to uh, that of mixing with the dam of the zrikas. So begin the current daf. Samachay amadal. Second one down at the top of the avod where the mishnah had said. That the carbon pesach had to be brought in three different groups. So we said, so okay, the first group leaves, the second group comes in, the second group leaves, the third group comes in. Now, Tanamalina Braisa, he, regarding the third group, Nikris Katat Slavis, is called the lazy group, because they were lazy, it's so giving full to come to be the last group. So the Gemara wonders, says, wait a second, why call in the third group the lazy group? What do you mean? It's not possible to be without a third group. Because there's a mitzvah for three groups. Might have a little member. What should they have done? You know, you have to have the 6.30 shachas, the 7.30 shachas. There has to be a 9.10 shachas. Who, so someone's got to come and fill the quota. So what's the problem? Why are you calling them the lazy ones? So the Gemara, Falachi, even so, but they should have gone ahead and been uh, industrious and been had a zeal to be from the first ones. Can you tell like, Linda Bryce, interesting Bryce, the Rebbe, he says like this. He says, It's not possible for the world without people that make perfume, or Bolei Bursi, and without tanners. The world has to have all of them. You're right, the world it has to be three groups. But Asher Mishum Nasi Basim, the praiseworthy is the one that his craft, his profession, is a perfumer. Ayla Mishum Nasi Bursi, woke to a person that that's his profession, that is a tanner, meaning you're going to have all types of workers, sanitation workers, and the lawyers, and, and Rabbanim, and them all different times. But Ashrechem, that this is your thing, so also they have to be a third group. But they're still called the lazy group, because they are the lazy one. They came last. And they didn't, they didn't push to be the first ones. So to be absolutely, the world's not possible to, to exist without male and female. Asher Mishabanam Zacharim, praise the is the one that his children are males. Oila Mishabanam Nekevis, woe to the one that his children are girls. Now, there are those who say Bonav on Nekevis, they make the diak that says the bond of his sons are Nekevis, meaning they don't want to have those types of sons. But the point is, is that you're going to have to have both types, Bonam Zacharim and, and, and Bonis Nekevis. But again, it doesn't mean to say that one shouldn't have it. But again, we're talking about that, which is Ashrechem, and therefore it's called the Kata Flan. So the, the, the Mishnah had said, that the way they were done during the Shabbos, uh, during the weekday, that's how they were done on Shabbos. But they did it not according to the will of the sage. It says, not. Uh, not according to the will of who? So Rav Chizri says, who are these Chacham that were not okay with this? It was really as that he says in general regarding mechabit, which is sweeping, which is similar to hadacha that we're talking about here regarding rinsing the floor of the azara, that is a chiv of chatas. So there in the Beit HaMikdash, when you really did what you needed to be done in the Beit HaMikdash, there's then it's going to be asr. Because as the Gemara explains, the Rabban, because everything is like the Rabban, Hamri, but they say, shvusu, it's only rabbinically prohibited. Beit the and there's no rabbinic prohibition in the Beit HaMikdash. It must be, who is the chacham that we're not okay with the rinsing of the floor of the azara? Must have been, that like Rabbi Yehuda, which Gemara says, "Mahi, what's this referring to?" The time of Linda Bryce, Echad Achaylov, where the one who milks, meaning it's the actual drawing and uh, pulling of the milk from the udders of the animal, or Vamachabit, so if someone curdles, <coughs> which that you put the milk in in a certain uh, positioning and you make from it clumps, which is curdling, put in the, some uh, elements that make that, or Vamagabin, or it's actually processing the cheese. If you do this. That's a liability of kegregris, the size of a dried fig, which that's the measurement of the liability of foods on Shabbos. 
Now, if someone sweeps, if someone settles the dust, or if someone takes down the honey cakes, the honeycombs, from the from the from the uh, beehive, b'shay b'shay gig b'shabes. If he does by mistake on Shabbos, chayiv chaz is liable for chatos. He's to be yomtiv. He does deliberately on yomtiv. Like yes, our bomb. So he gets the forty lashes. That's a rebel yes, which you see rebel yes holds that mechabed sweeping is a deiraisa, and therefore you're going to be chayiv for malchus and yichayiv for karmel chatos. As Rambam and the sages say, no echad zeh ve'echad zeh no mechabed sweeping, mechabed settling the dust and rather than taking down a honeycomb. Enil Mosh Meshulis is only rabbinically forbidden because the other ones, Rashi says, that the Chacham are not disagreeing about. Because those are Tarladus of an Avmaloch, as the Gemara says in Shabbos, Perek of Matzniya. Rabbi is saying on these, you're going to be Chayev. Chaylev, milking is because of Mefarik, which you're extracting a liquid from a salad. <coughs> Megabe, making cheese is because of Bain that's building. And Mechabe, it's curdling, is because of Bain, selecting the, <coughs> the certain elements, the proteins from the milk, making cheese out. Now, it's only regarding the other ones, Merabit, settling, and Mechabit, and sweeping. That thing where it says that Rebeleza holds is the problem of Ashvui Gumais, of making like Baina, or Chayrish, when you're smoothing out the, the, the pits. And the Raida of taking on the Chal's Dvash, he brings up a Pasig and Shmola, but he plays a Yaras Hadvash. It's like a forest, and it's like cutting down. The Gemara there explains. So Rebeleza holds, please go through the discussion what's exactly the Machlekes, that Mechabit and Merabit, you generally have in mind to smooth out the, the pits. So therefore, you're going to be, it's going to be considered as, as boina, whereas according to the Chachamim, it's not, but it's only rabbinically forbidden. Which Chase also discusses, says, wait a second, what type of pits are there? The Azara was tile. So what are you talking about that there was pits? So Chase says either that, we're talking about between the tiles, I guess there's no grout over there, with these gumois, so then you could smooth that out. Or that since in general that there is a biblical element, so therefore they were geyser even there in the basement, the Shekhar Draban, and that it's always only going to be rabbinic, so therefore they weren't geyser in the in the basement. But that's that's one approach to say that the Shlemitz and Chachamim was like Rabbi Yazir, who holds that generally Machabit sweeping and, and rinsing, which is similar, is a biblical violation, therefore it's, it was it was uh, forbidden in the base, in the basement, and therefore Shlemitz and Chachamim. Rabbi Hashem gives a second approach. He says, I feel like Shlemitz and Chachamim, you could even say, <clears throat> that when we're saying in the Mishnah that it was not according to the will of the sages, it's like the Rabbanim. That generally they say that sweeping and rinsing is only rabbinically forbidden. So the way they say, why is it forbidden? Why, were they, why didn't they okay? I thought Shabbos is permitted in the basic English. Yes, but Reb Nassim is called Reb Nassim. The Tanakh Lunar Barisa. Reb Nassim, he says, Shabbos Tzrichi Hitiyu. When did they permit a rabbinic prohibition of the basic English? It's only a necessary Shabbos. Shabbos Shein Tzrichi Hitiyu, but a rabbinic violation. It's not necessary in the basic English. They didn't permit even in the basic English. It's not necessary to, to sweep and clean it today, since the house can be a little dirty. Or, so, so the fact that there's, that there's blood on the floor, that was not a necessary shmus, and therefore that was not permitted to be done, and therefore shlebet said chacham. Then the Mishnah continued and said, Rabbi Yudam, he said, that kaitzem imal b'chul. What they used to do is, after everybody brought their carbon, no last call, everyone's last carbon, everyone's carbon was done, fine. What Rabbi Yudam, they, 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 a cutting would take a cup of the blood, he would scoop up from the floor a cup of blood, and he would throw one throw on the base. And the chacham, they disagreed, said, no, that was not done. So then when the Bryce elaborates on this Machlechus, Rabbi Yudam, he says, Kaysa ibn Malad Dabat Rebbe, like we said in the Mishnah, a cup is filled up from all the mixed bloods on the floor. Why? Sheim Yishad of the Dome Shalechem, man, because if one, of, if one person's blood was spilled out on the ground, and ultimately the blood wasn't thrown on the Mizbeach, so that would be an invalid from Pesach. He's not going to be able to... So Nitz, Zim, Achshir, comes out that this... Since all the bloods that were spilled out are going to be mixed into this cup, this is going to validate it. So it's very necessary. So if you do it, how many carbons are burned on every pestle? It's an incredible amount. And one guy's carbon, his blood could have spilled out. And, oh, what does he do? And so therefore, you, you scoop up, and if anyone's blood spilled, that's going to validate it. Now, only Rehuda said to Rehuda, but the halal in this cup of a kli. But what do you mean? It wasn't received in a vessel. So how, it, it, it spilled out from the animal straight onto the floor. So, so how is that going to help? You can't do his record out of Kabbalah. So the Gemara jumps in and asks on the, on the Chacham's question. Yadi, what do we, how do they know that it spilled straight from the animal onto the floor? So Elah Kamala, no, says the Gemara, no, this is what they said to him. That uh, th- this that you uh, want to validate it is Shem uh, this No, maybe, maybe it wasn't received in a vessel. And then Zerik is not going to help anymore because the Mishnah teaches in Zvachim, the second parak that if the blood spills straight from the neck of the animal onto the ground and then you gather it together and you spray it, it's going to be invalid because it has to have a Kabbalah 
then the halacha then is rika. And if it fell straight onto the ground, it's not a Kabbalah. So that was their question. Maybe he wasn't receiving the best. So Amal Hemley said to them, No, Afan Niloy Marti says, I also didn't say that it's effective. Elbin is Kabbalah Bukli. Of course, it's only effective if it, if it dropped into it. It, it, it was caught in the vessel. And then it spelled from the vessel onto the ground. But you're right, if it, it would spill straight from the neck of the Yama onto the ground, it wouldn't be valid. Now, it says, How does the Behuda know that if it was received in the vessel? But there's two ways to understand the Gemara's question. Rashi says that, what do you mean? In general, this is whole a, a concern, out of doubt, maybe the blood was spilled. But since you're coming to rectify a doubt, then how could you fix it with another doubt? Maybe it wasn't received in a vessel. Meaning, if it was a definitive fixing fire, I could understand. But this blood that you're even gathering, maybe it, it wasn't received in a vessel. You're not sure if, if blood was spilled out. Okay, fine, so you want to fix it. But you're not even doing a definitive fixing because maybe it didn't spill from, a, from the bowl that you caught into the ground. Maybe it spilled right from the neck of the animal onto the ground. That's how Rashi explains it. Tracy explains the Gemara's question is that no, to the contrary. The question is, maybe it wasn't received in the vessel. Actually, you're not allowed to. It's also to, to put blood that's possible on top of them as bad. You're trying to rectify the situation. Maybe God dropped his blood so you're going to fix his carbon, but maybe not. Maybe it spilled from the animal's neck straight into the ground, and that's down possible. And you're not allowed to. But you know, it's not going to help. It's us, sir, to take the blood that's possible and throw it to his back. So then, but that's the most question. How do you know it spilled straight from the bowl? Maybe it spilled from the animal, and then you're going to be violating this or throwing possible down on the his back. So that's what you know. I know it didn't spill from the neck onto the ground. Because Kahan's reasoning, Kahan may have alacrity. You don't have to be concerned, maybe it wasn't received. You know that they definitely did the appropriate amount. It says, well, I'm not going to wait a second. He's reason. If there's Zareth, am I Meshlapach? Then how exactly did it spill? What do you mean? You told me there's reason, then, so therefore you know for sure that it was done the right way. It says, no, no, uh, that's different. Agam Zirisayu da Abdi, because of their alacrity that they had, that they're running to go and quickly bring it to throw it, Meshlapach. So it could have fell out of the guy's hand and spilled. That's very different than not doing the Abed of Kabbalah of catching the blood. That for sure we know he did that he did, but the fact that it could have spilled, that could have happened, because as he's running, it bumps into another coin and spills on the floor, so that's the reason why we were concerned. Wasn't the shechite in the, in the area that the taboos were, and then there was a, a distance for the aluha, there was not the highness, but the distance where they were the aluha of the dog. So when you pick up the dog, it's from the area where the vessels were moving back and forth, not from the area from the shechite. Right, but the truth is that the Arab Pesach, they used every nook and cranny because there were so many animals that uh, they couldn't do it all in just one area. So he could, yeah, I mean, that, and then you have to know how they catch all the blood. But that's what the Gemara said, that that's what the reader said they did, because it could be spilled out of the blood. But says the Gemara, but like Dama Tamsis, now the Gemara has a different problem with Kibihido. The thing is, is there's something called Dama Tamsis. Dama Tamsis is the leftover blood, not the blood that spurts out right after you do the, 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 the Shrita. The, the remnants of the blood. That blood is, 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 is not valid to, to be used as the avoido. Uh, so you have all the psachim, their remnant blood, that's mu'urbay, that's mixed with. Now, if you're going to, if, if let's say one of the person's blood spilled out, it's all going to be totally nullified in its minority to the rest of the bloods in the, in the azara. Most of the blood that's sitting there on the floor is leftover bloods of the animals. So what does it help to do now throw that cupful? It's bottled, it's nullified, and all that other blood over there, which the Dhamma Tam says is not valid down for the Zrika. So the more Rabbi Tamir Rabbi goes according to his reasoning, which is the Ahmed he says, Dhamma Tam says the remnant blood, Dhamma al Yuhu, is, is bonafide blood. It is considered like the blood of the Zrika. The Tanya Luna Bryce. Dhamma Tam says the remnant blood of any animal, Kulan animal, a Kajan animal, Bazara has a negative prohibition. Now, this town, the not Rebido, holds there's no cards. Why? Because the Pasuk says, when you the prohibition regarding eating blood, it says, kinefish The soul of every flesh, its blood is in its soul, until it says, whoever eats is going to get cards. Now, that excludes damatamsis, which is not the dam nefesh, it's not the life blood, it's the remnant blood, it's not the primary life blood. But Tigmar increases, learns out, the reasoning for this is because there's five lavin that the Torah says regarding eating blood, and one of them is extra to teach you Dhamma Tamsis, but it's not from what this Pasuk tells you about cars. There's five Pasukim, but here where it talks about cars, it's only Dhamma Nefesh, not Dhamma Tamsis. But Rabbi Yehuda, he said, no, be he cars. There's going to be cars. So you obviously Rabbi Yehuda holds that Dhamma Tamsis is like the Dhamma Nefesh. So also, therefore, you tell me, should we bottle? It's not bottle, it's the same type of blood. They're both called Dhamma. And therefore, it's not bottle. But he goes, wait a second, but you can't say that. 
You're right. Regarding eating down, you're being the Karu. But regarding atonement, she'en a kapper. Did you don't get atonement by throwing the, the dama tamsis? And if it's not fit for zrika, and if again it's still considered something that should be mavatel the the dam of the zrika, so like the pasuk meikar says ki adamu benefeshi chaper, because the blood is in the soul, it's what it tones as a continuum of base. What does that mean? Dam shen nefesh yotzeboy, the blood that the soul leaves with, which is what's called dam kiluach, which is the blood that flows out, which as we want to teach increases in five types of bloods. Dam atam shen dam nefesh dam kiluach. There's five different types of bloods. That's what machaber. That you get a tome with. Dam shein nefesh yotzeboy, the blood that the soul does not leave with. Ain't a machabra does not provide atonement. So here we're back to the question. So the dam should be bottled because it's not effective. The dam is not the same type of blood that you could spray. So the difference between bottled by utai in the rest of the blood. So why did it have to take a cup full and throw them as bath? Now, rather, it's a more different interpretation. The Yudu Tamei really goes according to his reasoning, not because of what we just said, that dam and is like dam and nefesh. Rather, because dam, he says, ain't dam of dam. He says, there is no laws of bitl from one type of blood on another type of blood. Ah, so therefore, it's not, this blood that's supposed to not be bottled. And every little drop that hits the Mizbech is a valid Zrika, and it's going to be valid. Which is just teaching of Rebbe in the Zvach, and Perikol Zvach, which is the which we, we, we learn regarding the blood of a carbon, that if you have blood that's mixed with water, so the Gemara says over there that if it has a color of blood, it's going to be kasha. Now, if let's say the blood of an animal, chulun, or blood of a wild animal, gets mixed into the blood of a carbon, then we see it as if it was water. If it was enough in the valid dam to give a color of blood, it'd be kasha if that's going to be possible. That's how they come. Yudha says, no, even if it wouldn't give a color, ain't dam a vatal dam. Dam blood doesn't, is not a vatal dam. <clears throat> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no bitl, there's no nullification. <laughs> but, yeah. Right, so that's what the Gemara discusses regarding the Yudha Lashitase dam. So, so dam is not a vatal dam, so therefore, uh, it's not going to be a problem. Therefore, you could scoop up a cupful, and no matter how much tamatams tam there is, it's going to be valid. Now, the Gemara brings Tanya, we learn the Brisa, that, that, that Brisa, Amal Hamidhi Lachacham. Yudha says to the sages, where is it? Lidarechim, according to your opinion, Lama Paikin asks, why did they close up the hole of the, there, there was a hole by the wall of Hazar of the courtyard, where the blood that would get mixed into the canal, they, which we had mentioned in the previous stuff, there was a canal going through the, the Hazar, which would take out all the dirty things outside, so they would plug it up every Arab Pesach. So it says to me, it makes sense according to me, that they would, the reason why they would do this, why would they plug it up? Because they don't want the blood that spilled out to get to, to go out. You know, you have the diamond ring that falls down, quickly close the thing, you don't want to go and fly out the, the pipes. So here also, they wanted to close up the hole so that anyone that blood spilled, they could, they could gather the cup of all the mixture, and, and it's going to have all the blood that's inside of it, and then they're going to spray it on, on the Mizbeach. But according to you, that they wouldn't do this, so why would they plug up the hole? to stop the blood zone from flowing out in their vessel. So Malidia said it's actually for a different reason. The reason is, is because Shvachul Ibn Aaron, it's a praise for the sons of Aaron, for the people of the Shiyilcha Adar Kervaseim, but then they should go knee deep into the blood. They kept the blood from flowing out so that the Kahan should be walking in the blood. Says the Gemara, okay, maybe it's Shvach, because it shows the Abayda that they're doing, but Volka Chayetz. Yeah, but yeah, how could you say that they would walk knee deep in blood, but there's a problem of Chatzitza, there's an interposition between their legs and the floor. As the mission teaches, if someone's of a coin standing on a vessel or on top of his friend's foot, it's possible because you need lamed lasharis. You have to have standing on the ground. And this is not considered standing because on top of something else, it's chatzitza. So he says, no, it's not a problem because lachu, the blood is moist. It's wet. And that's not an interposition because then like Linda Brisa. Hadam, blood, vajoy, ink, olive, and milk, and vash, and honey. It depends. If you vash them, if they're dry, chaitzin, then it's considered an interposition, which that. Um, that Bryce is discussing regarding Tvila, if you go a table in the mikvah, if it's liquidy, it's not considered chatzitz. If, 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 it's, if, it's, if it's dry, then it's considered chatzitz. But lachen, if it's moist, in chatzitz, it's not considered as a chatzitz. So you're also the blood's not chatzitz because it was, it was wet, it was moist. It says, okay, but I have a different problem. How can you say they went knee deep in blood? But their kahana garments would get dirty, filthy from blood. Tanan and really begins with Tanan learning the Brisa. Hey, Megadav mitush tashim ba'avir ve'koyin's garments were dirty, were filthy, were soiled, and they did not. But that's so. It's going to be invalid. Avayd has to be has to be the shameless fast. Has to be beautiful garments. So, Chidre, you're going to say, okay, no problem. The Madlu the Menayu when they went knee deep in blood, they would roll up their garments so they wouldn't get dirty. But Tanan learning the Brisa, that's also not a possibility. Because the pasuk says, "But Yikra," it says, "Belovers are koyin. The koyin will wear midoy vat his linen garment." Now, what's midoy? Midah is from the word kimigdasim, like his measurement, meaning it has to be 
that's equal to the ground, that has to be according to the measurements of the Kayan, that's how far, that's how long the requirements have to go, which tells you, Shalayasavalayasir can't be any shorter, can't be any longer, it has to fit in perfect, it has to be custom made, it can't be longer or shorter than it has to be, so it can't roll up his garments, it has to be fitting him. So says the Gemara, you're right. Really, the truth is, doing that void, though, you can't go knee deep in blood because either way you're running into problems. If his garments are down, it's going to get dirty. If he rolls it up, it's too short. So, and, and if you, and, and you're right, you know, it's not going to be a but, but, but that's going to be a problem of either one or the other. So the Gemara says, well, when did we say they went knee deep? By Lochas Eivar Mlekevich. Specifically, when they would transport the limbs to the ramp, the love of That's not a Vaida. And therefore, it's not a Vaida. They can roll up their garments. The Gemara Lerner is going to ask, he says, well, okay, but what do they do with the other Vaidas? The, the ground is full of blood, how they get through. But for now, the Gemara is saying, this is when they would transport the limbs. It says, Gemara is that really so that Haylochas Eivar Mlekevich was not an Avaida? But with the Bayi Kuhun, the fact that you needed Kahan to do it, obviously Avaida is considered an integral service of the Avaida. It's not like Linda Bryce, it's a positive Hikr. It says, the Hikr of Akkoyim is Akkoyim is Bech. The Akkoyim would bring near everything from the carbon to the Mizbech. What is this referring to? What's the Bechir? What's Hakkoyim? So Haylochas Eivar Mlekevich, this refers to bringing the limbs to the ramp, which by that is where the Pasik says, I care, I care, I am, it's too much, the intestines over there. So you see that bringing the limbs are considered part of the Avaida. So the Gemara says, Eli, you're right, no. But Haylachas ate from the Marocha. Why did we say that they would do this knee deep? Was when they would bring the wood, the logs, to the pyre, to the fire, and shove them in bath. The love of Avaida, that's not Avaida, and that's when we said they went knee deep in blood, and that's why they plugged the hole they wanted to come to. Yeah, and the blitz from the Kabunas, that's where they would go to show Shachuli is Lebanon iron, that's when they did it. Says Gemara, okay. But by Lachas, around the camera, when they would actually transport the limbs to the ramp. And by Lachas, when they would take the blood and bring it to the Mizbeth, Mio Hechaza, how did they go then? <laughs> you can't, you, the blood was all over the floor. So, Masha, either they, their garments are going to get dirty, which is also, or they would roll it up, which is also a problem. Says the Gemara, the Maska eats the bra. Then they would go on platforms of building that they had over there, which was like the Ritzba, which has the same Allah he said as the ground. That's what they would walk on when they had to get to the Mizbeth. So they would go on these platforms. <laughs> What? <laughs> no, so it's considered these stone platforms had the same halachic status as the Azara. So it wasn't a chatzitim, it wasn't something else. It would have the same kedushas, ritzpas, Azara, and that's what they would use to go and, and get there. Uh, because, yeah, during those avoidances, they couldn't roll it up or, or go with the garments down. Then the Mishnah said, Keitza, the, the Mishnah concluded, the pair concluded, Keitza turned them off, Shid Mahul. So, what did they do? How did they hang the animal and skin it, etc.? Which we explained how they skinned it. And Karu by Tsirase Murab. Then we said they would tear open the animal, the Karm Pesach, take out the sacrificial parts. Nostrum and Magus, they would put it into this bowl, like Tiron, which the Vilna, uh, the Repeat actually says it, it should say the Tiron, because as we'll see, they want to question. And then, and then they, would, they would sacrifice it. I think one wonders if you read it that way, the way Repeat is here says, who goof I have a maktal? What you think he himself would, would, would burn it on the Mizbeh? In other words, but he's a non coin, he's a czar. Because as Rashi explains, we're talking about a czar. The Mishnah had said that the owners of the carbon, regular Yisraelim, they would put the animal on their shoulders, on his friend's shoulder, and that they would, they would skin it. And the Kahanim would not skin Kutch and Kalim, because what's the difference between them or us? Even the skinning and the dismembering of a carbon Eilo, which is a mitzvah, is even that Kashim with a czar, as the Gemara says in Yumid of Chavavim Abbas. So, so what does it mean if you read the words that says they would put it in the bowl and they would sacrifice it? What do you mean they would sacrifice it? The, 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 the Haktara has to be done with a coin, not the Yisrael who was doing everything up until this point. Same as says, come on, no, lehaktira, to burn. In other words, they would put it in the bowl so that to burn, I mean, so until it's fit to be burned, then the one who is able to do it, which is the coin, will go ahead and do the Haktara, al kavan mezveh, al And then the Mishnah said, Yotzeh Kavr Shain Vachul, as we said, that then the first group will go out, and then the second group will come in, and then the third group until they would wait till it gets dark because it was Shabbos era Pesach, because you can't, uh, and then they would go home and roast it. And the Bryce said, every single one, when he would go home, nice and Pischabai, what he would do is he would put his carbon Pesach, he would put it into the hide, the skin of the animal, and he would throw it over his shoulder, and Amr of Elish, which was the name of the sage, he says, Tayos, it's like the Arab merchants who they throw their their stuff in a bag over their shoulder, that's what they would do. They would take the hide, the skin of the Karm Pesach, and they would use it as a sack. And they would put inside their meat of the Karm Pesach and throw it over their shoulder. And that's how they went home holding their Karm Pesach. I don't know if which I return to you, the fifth parak in the seventh second parak, Tom and which primarily spoke about the Karm Tom and the Karm Pesach in its avoida of slaughtering. And then we begin the sixth parak, 
continue on the steam regarding Karpon Pesach as it's done on Shabbos, what's allowed and what's not allowed to be done on that Shabbos, which is Perak Eludvar. Says the Mishnah Eludvar. These are the things about Pesach that are different to Shabbos, that they override the prohibitions of Shabbos, which the Gemara is going to explain where does our Mishnah know it from. But they are Shkitasai, the, 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 the slaughtering, Vizrikis Damai, and the spraying of the blood, which they said that's Agav the Shkita, because if you're doing Shkita, obviously you're doing Vizrika also. But the point is that these are things that can only be done during the day, <laughs> meaning on the day of. As the Pasad of Yikazai, but Yun Savoysi will have to do it during the day and not at night time, so there's no other option but to do it today on Shabbos, which is Er Pesach when you're bringing the Karm Pesach, and Omichu Kurava, and also of the cleaning out of the intestines. You're going to explain exactly what that is. And the reason is so that it shouldn't putrefy, it shouldn't spoil. And the haktar is halal, and the burning of the sacrificial parts of the fat. That's what's permitted. Avatsli also, but roast in the carbon pasta, which is after you do the whole avayda and you have the meat. Vadach is karabav, and rinsing out the, the intestines, which is different than michli karabav. Michli is, is, is getting the waste matter out. Hadach is just rinsing it. In the, in the Shabbos, these things do not override Shabbos because these things you can do after Shabbos ends, when it's darker, when it's ready, Matzah Shabbos, when it's yomtim. So that's what's not allowed. Now, the next category, Harkavasai, which is to transport, meaning on the person's shoulder, to bring to the Azara through the Rosh Hashanah, which, although there's only, it's only rabbinically prohibited, where, because we, we know what's called Chai Noises Atzmai, a living thing carries itself, so it's only rabbinically prohibited, but still, it's not going to override Shabbos because he should have done it yesterday. So therefore, that's where we're going to see it's Machlekes. And also regarding the Havasim of the Tchum, to bring it from out of the Tchum, or Vachatichis Yabalasai, cutting off the wart of the animal, let's say he cuts it up with his fingernail, or he cuts it with his teeth, which is also only rabbinically forbidden, because it's a malachi klachiyad, it's done in an indirect way, even though these are only rabbinically prohibited, the Tanakhama says that Ein Derech HaNesha Shabbos does not override Shabbos, even though it's only rabbinically prohibited, that we're not allowed to go ahead and do these things, because you could have done it from, from before Shabbos. Now, Eliezer Ayman Derech disagrees, he says no, it, 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 the, it, it does override the prohibition, which Amr Lezi says, well, he didn't, he says, it's a kamachai, it's a, use logic. Man, shita, if the slaughtering of the animal, the karm pesach, shahi, which is prohibited by a non carbon on Shabbos, mishal malacha, because of a bona fide malacha, because shita is one of the lamates malachis, and even so, we're saying, daiches, a Shabbos, we're saying that on Yom Tiv, do the carbon pesach, it'll override the malacha dairaisa, so even shay mishal mishalis, so these things, of, let's say, carrying it on your shoulder through the streets, or bringing from the chutz of chum, or cutting up the wart. Shehim mishum shlusu, which are only rabbinically forbidden. Well, Yitzchak says Shabbos, you can tell me that's not going to override Shabbos. Of course, it's going to override Shabbos, and therefore he disagrees with the Tanakhama. Which only Bishur, Bishur says to him, he says, no. Yom Tiv Yechiach, Yom Tiv could go ahead and prove that you're incorrect. Why? Your logic is not definitive. Shehitir, because on Yom Tiv they permitted slaughtering an animal, cooking an animal, which is mishum alacha. That's an av malacha, and still a regular person permitted to do that on Yom Tim. Yet va'asa by mishum shavus, but yet you're not allowed to do rabbinic prohibitions like bringing that meat from ar the tchum to eat it, since you could have done it from the day before, even though tchum is only rabbinic. So therefore, it's not definitive to say if you let you do a malacha deraisa, we shouldn't let a malacha derabanan, because as we'll end off in the Mishnah, as we'll see, that something that could have been done from before Shabbos. Yeah, of course, of course, if you do a malacha deraisa, you do a malacha derabanan for echad nefesh. But if you could have done it from before Shah, from before Yom Tiv, like bringing it from a certain place, which is no hatter to do this on Yom Tiv, so therefore it's not true, and certain rabbinic prohibitions are prohibited on Yom Tiv, so therefore you could say also about the Karim Pesach, mm-hmm. even though they let you do Malach and Deiraisa, these rabbinic prohibitions, like cutting off the ward, or doing things that you could have done from bringing it from Chutz Tchum, from you could have done before, from before Shabbos, would be prohibited. <coughs> which only Rebbe Lezah, Lezah says, no, Mazi Yeshua, what is this Yeshua? Ma Rai Yeshua, why do you bring me a proof from something that's voluntary, Volitional, which is the eating of a regular person on Yom Tov, which is a Rishos, la mitzvah, to a mitzvah. The Tzayruch Kavayim, to bring a carbon is a mitzvah. If the Chacham went ahead and they made a rabbinic prohibition with something that's voluntary, like eating certain meat on Yom Tov, you think they're going to go ahead and do the same thing even by a mitzvah, like the carbon Pesach? Must haste. It's not a comparison. Don't bring me a ride from Yom Tov that even though they permit Malach and their rice and prohibit rabbinic prohibitions, that's for Rishos. I'm talking about a mitzvah. There are mitzvah, even though you could have done it from before Shabbos. If you didn't, and you want the transport, of course you could do it. Now, H. Rebbe Kiva, so now Rebbe Kiva gets up, and he, he says, no. 
He says to Rebbe he says, Hazor Tikiya. What's, what 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 hazal? A person that was tummy because he came in contact with a dead person. If a seventh day of his purification, which is the last day, which if that falls out to be on Shabbos Erev Pesach, he has to be sprayed with the paraduma ashes. That will disprove your logic. Why? Shehimish mitzvah. There's a mitzvah element over there because if he doesn't get sprayed, he can't bring his carbon Pesach. And the himish mitzvah, and it's only rabbinically prohibited because there's no malacha. When you spray him with part of the body, what are you doing with it? It looks like that as if you're fixing a person. It looks like ticking mud. Because when you, when, you, when you get sprayed, he's fixed, he's tar, he's pure. From the, uh, when there's water that it was sprinkled on him. So it's, but it's only rabbinically prohibited. And yet, Vinadeh is a Shabbos. This is how Rabbi Kiva heard the tradition that doing the Hazal on the tummy person, the Tmei Mispeshvishle, is not tar. And it doesn't overwrite Shabbos. Okay? So I'll tip my lelu. So there, you shouldn't wonder regarding these halachas too of harkavasa, bringing from chutz v'chum, cutting off the ward. Shalav be shemish mishmitza, shemish mitzvah, the shemish mishmitza. Then even though there's a mitzvah element and they're biblically prohibited, lo yitchas hashab, not to override shabbos. Exactly like hazaf from a tummy person, which is a mitzvah purpose. It's only rabbinic, and still you know how to do it. Church only related to this to know about le'ol ani don. On that is what I'm going to litigate. Meaning. I also disagree on that case of Hazar, a spring of a tummy person, and of course it's going to override over there, and it's not going to hold him back from doing Karm Pesach, from the same Karm Pesach. Oh my, in Meshachit Te'ev, regarding Sechim the Karm Pesach, Shem Bishem Malacha, which is prohibited because as a Av Malach, Te'ev Shabbos, still the Karm Pesach is going to push away the prohibition of Shabbos, so Hazar Shem Bishem Shavuos, a spring of a person, which only when it prohibits, no Malacha being known over here, in a Dinshu Te'ev Shabbos, of course the Karm Pesach, of course you're going to do that in Shabbos, hey, so you bring me a ride, and I disagree there too. Now, which we can see in Tabak Zaman Bam and Al, on that on Rabbi Kiva, and we'll see in the Gemara what exactly was Rabbi Kiva saying over here. He says, Echilif, no, Efsha Pung Fakir, anyone who wants to be a Lamdan can say, no, Echilif, I'm going to say Pink Fakir, that, no, it's obvious to me that Haza, spraying a tummy person, is Ma'akit, it will, we will not let him do it on Shabbos, and it will stop him from doing the Karmasa. And from there, actually, we'll learn the Kabbalah Chaymer that actually, Shrita should also not be allowed. Why? He says like this. He says, my mazo, he says, if spring a tummy person, Shemesh Shemesh was only rabbinically prohibited. In a day of Shabbos, it's not over at Shabbos. So, Shritim Shemesh Malacha, so slaughtering an animal, which is a Malacha de Raisa, in a day of Shabbos, it's not Shabbos. No, Kabbal Chaim, that even that, you shouldn't be able to do Shrita on Shabbos. For Shabbos, the Lord says, Akiva, Akarta Mashagas Matar, then you're up in what it says in the Torah. The Pasi is brought in by Midbar Bimayadrai. It says that the Yasser when they saw the Pesach of the Me'adi, the Jewish people should do the Karm Pesach of the Me'adi in its designated time. We'll say, but designated time. We know when this was before. What's Bim Me'adi? Which means to say, no matter when it is, Bim Me'chil Bim Me'shabbos, whether it's weekday, whether it's Shabbos, you'll always bring it on the afternoon or the fourth of the afternoon. Is it clearly that you bring the Karm Pesach and you're shechted even on Shabbos? So how can you bring me a Kabbal Chaymer from Azar to tell me that even Shechiti can't do? So it's all nice. It says, Rebbe, Havali Mayid La'el, bring me a set time. For these, meaning for the harkava and all those different things, kemoyed l'shchita, like a set time for shchita. In other words, as was Rashi explains, what he was saying was, since there's no set time for the harkava and the habas mechutzutchum and the cutting of the word, and you could have done it from yesterday, so it's not going to override. You're right. You're right from the shchita where it says hazal. Uh, it, it says B'me'adu, which B'me'adu is going to teach you that you're going to do it on Shabbos. But that's just the Shechita. But regarding other things, other things you're not going to go ahead and do. So, Hazal, <coughs> from the tummy, uh, for, for a tummy person, as Rashi explains, is also not from the actual Karm Pesach itself. And therefore, there it doesn't say B'me'adu. So those two things, Rebbe Kiva is going to disagree with Rebbe Liazor, which the Mishnah ends off, Kalam Rebbe Kiva. There's a general rule that Rebbe Kiva said. Shabbos does not override the Shabbos. It cannot be done before Shabbos. That's the Shabbos. That's what's going to override the Shabbos. So when it says and that means it has to be done today. So that's what we're going to say that it's going to be the Shabbos. But regarding all the other things like Hazav, a tummy person, or bringing the carbon pesach from Chutzat Chum. That is something that does, did not have to be done today. It doesn't say Bimayadi, you could have done it from yesterday. And therefore, yeah, even though it's only rabbinically prohibited, it's not going to be permitted. 
Again, we'll see anything more. Why did he want to say that a Kabbalah Khan Ben Shrita if he obviously knows the Pasuk Bemeyadai, but he just wanted to prove the point as the Gemara explains that to show, no, Hazah is forbidden, and therefore that's why they disagreed with Gabriel Yazak. Then there's a discussion in today's Daf, and Psachim Daf Samach Hey was, uh, we, we said from the Mishnah that when the first group goes out, etc., and then you have the third group. Which we said that they're the kata slon is the lazy group because although there has to be a third group, but woe to the person that his craft is a profession that's a smelly like a tanner, and someone that his bun of his sons are in the caves are feminine in that way. Again, there has to be all types of people in the world, but it's your mazel that you're from the from that. So that's what said that those people are called the lazy group. So then we went to the halacha and mission that we said that. They would rinse before the Azara on Shabbos for Lebet Tzern Chacham. Who is these Chacham? Either from the Azur who holds that Mechaber is their Raisa. Sweeping is a biblical violation of Ashlui Gumor, is a boina, of filling the holes. And the same thing goes for rinsing. And therefore, that was prohibited even in the Beis Amikdash, because it wasn't rabbinically their Raisa, or at least it could be their Raisa, the way Tais explained. Or, no, it could even be like Rabbana, who hold generally it's rabbinically prohibited. So I thought Shavuz is moved in the Beis Amikdash. But it's going to come Nassim, that Shavuz, that's unnecessary, that they didn't go ahead and permit them. It's unnecessary to, to, to rinse the azar. Then the Mishnah said, Rehuda said what they used to do, they filled one cup full of all the spilled blood, they would throw it on them as they why? In case one of them, our bloods had spilled. Where? We know that they received the blood, because karma's reason. But even though there's reason, maybe as he's running quickly, he bumps into another guy and it spills down. So that's why, <coughs> that's why they would take the blood, which had a cup of Now, Rehuda Shitasai is that blood, is, 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 is not bottle in, in the Dhamma Tamsa that's mixed in it, why not? So the Gemara originally wanted to say it because Dhamma Tamsa is just a like regular Dham too, that Yechai covers when you eat it, but still the Gemara says, no, but still it's not Machaper. It won't help, it's still, it's still problematic Dham to be bottled in that, rather it's because the Ha'ach of Ain't Dham, Bottle Dham, that's why it's not going to nullify it. And that's why he held, that's why they would close up the Azara. They would plug up the whole of the canal so that you could have the blood in the throat. According to Rabban, why would they plug it up? They didn't need the blood. It's a shlach with me'aren that they're walking knee deep in the blood of the karbanas. But, but what do you mean? You have a different problem. They're walking knee deep. It's chatzitza. No, it's, it's moist. It's not a chatzitza. But, but then their garments get dirty and, and you can't do that by them. No, they would roll up their garments. Or say, if you roll up their garments, it says midevan. As we can say, it can't be shorter than what it has to be. No, when did they roll up their garments? When they would go and take the wood to the, to the marocha, to the fine mezbeach. Well, what did you address that by them? Oh, then they went on the bodies. They went on these platforms, these stone platforms, but they wouldn't get dirty. And therefore, that was considered uh, that's the uh, appropriate avoider on the Azar floor. And then we finished Tama Nishchet. That's how many parakim we finished. That's, I guess, how many explanation points I made. We started the sixth parak, a parak Elud Varm, which we said, um, Elud Varm, these are the things that on Pesach are Deche Shabbos. Slaughtering the animal, throwing the blood, clean, uh, squeezing out the intestines, and sacrificing the, the fat. Whereas the roasting and the uh, rinsing of the intestines are not Deche Shabbos. And we have Machlik is regarding transporting the animal, bringing from the Chutz Chum, cutting off the wart, and also regarding spraying a tummy person, which the only rabbinic would be prohibited, but since it's possible to be done from before Shabbos, if you said a cloud, even though it's only rabbinic would be prohibited, since it could have been done from Shabbos, then you cannot do it on Shabbos, even if it's a certain mitzvah, even if it's only a Shabbos, the Katra B'Lev said, hell, that no, the Kabbal Chaim, if the rice is a mutter, like Shrita, the short the Rabbanon's life, HaKabasai, and all these things are going to be permitted to be done. Shabbos, thank you for any time. <laughs> <laughs>